What's up you guys, my name is Ryan, welcome to the channel, thanks for watching. Now today we're talking about a photo called Love, but before we get into that, let's get into a few tips that can help you become a better artist. Let's go. You know, it's really not that bad. <laughs> yeah, you like that? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. What's going on, guys? My name is Ryan. Thanks for watching the show. Today, we're talking about a photo that I like to call love. It's one of my favorites. It shows a picture of me and my wife looking into paradise, kind of surrounded by creation and protected from danger. But before we get into that, let's get into a few tips that can help you become a better artist. You're just not going to let me go, huh? Yeah. I'll be right here. Okay. So one thing that helped me grow as an artist as I got older was watching other artists who I thought were really good. And this happened a lot during school when we'd see people drawing in class or you know, making art in an art class or something. You see what they do that catches your eye. And if you watch somebody make art, you can see that they have different techniques and different methods for you know, creating art that they think is good. And so if you kind of mimic those techniques, you can add them into your drawings, you can add them into your paintings. And over time, you just become this melting pot, I guess, of skills that you learn from other artists. This is a method that I use many times over. There are many elements in my drawings that I noticed that I got from other artists. So don't think that you have to have it all down pat when you first start, or you have to be great, unique, and original all by yourself you can learn a lot from other artists and they may have methods to use that you haven't thought of and that can really help you become a better artist. Another suggestion that I have for you is to <laughs> another suggestion that I have for you is to try new styles. A lot of people get stuck in one medium. Maybe they're a painter, maybe they're a sketch artist, maybe they're a marker artist or some sort of graffiti. But um, what would really help is if you start to play with other mediums. A lot of people think that you have to stick with one if that's the kind of artist you are. But that's just not true. Some of my best pictures are where I took a different type of medium and added it in. A lot of my newer paintings are basically half paint, half marker. I find it to be a wonderful balance. I've used techniques like glitter, recommendation of my wife. Uh, I've used dripping paint on the canvas. I have dabbled in using a pencil before I make my pictures. Even though that's one of my primary rules is don't use a pencil. I like to make it permanent from the start, so that way I'm committed to the drawing and I don't have a chance to erase anything or make any changes. If you're a sketch artist, maybe you could try picking up a Sharpie and just drawing from the start in permanent ink. If you like to make most of your art in marker, maybe you should try picking up some paint brushes and grabbing some acrylic paint and adding it to your drawing. If you're an artist who only paints on canvas, maybe you should try a few different texture options by adding glitter or maybe even an outline in marker or Sharpie. You can use a paint pen to outline your work in a canvas and it makes it really pop. One thing you can't get with a brush is too much precision. Now that being said, a lot of people can get precision with their brush. I find it more difficult than a pen tip or a marker tip. So outlining your work can be something that makes it really stand out and maybe you haven't tried it before. So the artwork we're talking about today is called Love. It's definitely my favorite painting. I didn't have it for a while because I actually took it to work. I like to keep it near me. It's one of my favorite pieces because of the skill that's displayed in it. it took a lot of time to make this. This is one of my newest pieces, I guess as of the last year or so. It has half paint, half marker. It really pops, has a deep meaning, and it just shows off everything that I'm about as an artist. So the centerpiece would be the blue monster that is my metaphor for the Holy Spirit. You can see that his tail goes down and stretches around the people. There's two people standing on his tail, and uh, they're standing in the blue. Blue kind of represents safety, red kind of represents power, fire kind of represents hell, and then colors and space represent creation. So when you see my pictures, you can kind of break it down into those categories. So the Holy Spirit is there wearing the mask of a skull, mask of death, 
Again, kind of explained this several times, but people are afraid of death and there's nothing to be afraid of. You just look forward to it and uh, the, the best is yet to come. But the people are standing safely on the tail, protected from the fire below, you know, and their perspective is somewhat of a paradise view. So they're looking out over the water, they're witnessing a sunset and a starlit sky above. You can see the color waves above that, just showcasing creation itself. And then you can't help but notice that there's some stars in there. And that's for me, Trick Stars, TK. Gotta put three stars in there. I signed this piece TK that has to do with the talent that God gave me. You'll see me either sign it with R-A-M or TK. And uh, this one's signed TK because I feel like it has a really heavenly presence with it. You see that he's holding a lantern. That's just like a universal representation of, you know, shedding light on what is and truth, justice. If you notice in the close-up shots, the uh, marker skill here is impeccable. The paint is perfect. It's my favorite piece because of the way the colors lay. The texture of the painting is, you know, very satisfying. The balance of color is just right. This is a perfect example of one of my best paintings. A lot of detail in the right place, not too busy, not too empty. Uh, this one just hits the spot. One of my favorite things about this is Winston. The mouth of the monster is like super cool. It's got a grin with one tooth, uh, a couple of teeth I really like. Tiny! This little dog keeps running around the house and playing with toys and he's gonna get all the audio. You can hear him right now. Tiny. What are you doing? So if you haven't noticed already, there's a little dog and his name's Tiny or Winston, but uh, we call him Baby Wolf and he's a troublemaker. He's a handful, don't get me wrong, but we love him to death. So I hope you like the format of this video. It's a little different, but I wanted to showcase the new wall and Tiny. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what am I gonna do with that dog? Anyways, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button, totally free, and you can see when I post a new video, go over art. Just started a vlogging channel too, so I've been editing that one, it takes a lot of time. I got like two hours of footage to make down into like 10 minutes, 20 minutes. So uh, anyways, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.